Here we have an iPad 5 that came in for repair. iPad 5th generation, and this one is model number model number A1822. Customer said it does not power on. Who fixes an iPad 5, right? You'd be surprised. A lot of people. They do it for the sake of just fixing the tablet. They have applications that they need, or maybe they have photos inside or maybe data recovery, whatever the case may be. We got the tablet in for repair, and let's read what the customer wrote. Screen went black while in use. Tried to turn back on, no joy. Tried the reset home button with power button, no joy. Tried to charge for an hour, and try all of the above, again, no joy. Went to YouTube, saw your iPad repair for fifth generation, same as what I have. Looks, sounds, feels like an inline capacitor. You'd know better than I, so I left it closed for your inspection. iPad has never been open, and it is relatively new used condition. From one tech to another, thank you for your help. Now, the first thing we did was plug the charging cable in. The tablet is charging at 5 volts, 1.1 amps, which is 100% Perfect, no issues at all. Usually we see a 0.6 amp charge, we see a 0.48 amp charge, we see a 0.7 or 0.8, which could be an indication that we have a problem or a short circuit on the board. I went ahead and did a visual inspection on the board. I did not find anything obvious. I did not plan to record the video, but now I thought, why not? I have a lot of iPad repair videos on YouTube, one million videos on iPad repairs. Let's make it one million and one, right? Why not? Put the brightness up. Usually I look in this area. I see if there's a hole on that piece of whatever, piece of fabric. If we have any holes, a hole is an indication that something got hot below or something blue or something burned. But that shield looks good. Nothing burned under. If we lift up the shield, we see components. We have components around the connectors. And no reason to believe that we have any issues here. Right now, the tablet does not power on. It's not like it powers on and we do not have an image or we have a backlight and no image. No, the tablet is not powering on. So before I decided to record the video, I went ahead and probed around. I probed and I came across a short circuit. Let me show you. Right now, I have the battery disconnected. You never want to measure with the battery connected. If you look here, meter in diode mode, we are reading 0, 0.000, and we are reading 0, 0.000 voltage drop. So that's it, that short. If we go to ohms mode, and we probe again, what is the ohm reading on this cap? Zero ohms, I mean the diode, and we have zero ohms. So that's it, that short here. Now, if we probe around this power I see here, let me go to diode mode. See, we have it that short. We have all zeros. Every single one of them is a zero. All those caps are connecting in parallel, and one of them must be shorted to ground for all those caps to read the short, or it could be the chip itself. Who knows? So I got that far with the repair. And then I push the record button, and now we have a video. And that short is on, our voltage injection tool. I'm going to connect the ground probe anywhere on the frame here. And we're going to inject voltage. We can inject voltage anywhere, anywhere on the calves, or we can inject here. And we're going to monitor the board under a thermal camera and see what gets hot. Right there. See it? If I release the probe, heat spot goes away. I put the probe. We have a heat spot. Let me do this one more time. We have a heat spot right in the middle of the chip on top, right here. Right here. One of the four caps right here. 
I was not able to pinpoint which cap, but maybe we can use our atomizer to pinpoint where the shot is coming from. Or maybe if I put the brightness down on the LED and we look for any discolored cap, maybe that could be an indication. Let me tilt that iPad quick. Does any one of the caps look obviously bad? I mean, I see something here. Heat was not coming from the first cap, which is this guy here. I do see a red circle, but heat was not coming from here. Heat was coming from here. Hard to tell because this one looks off. This right here looks off. But should we follow what we see under the microscope or should we follow our thermal camera? Maybe we have more than one short, who knows? Okay, I'm gonna use our atomizer. Just drop some flux powder. I press down on the button and then the atomizer is gonna release flux powder, okay? I'm not sure if you can see the flux powder. Then just push down like this. All right. So we have flux powder everywhere. Right here. Now we're going to inject voltage and see. Okay, so the way I see it, I can already tell which cap is bad. Can you see it? Write it down in the comments. Do not cheat. Which cap do you think is bad? Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Which cap is bad? Write it down. No cheating. Do not fast forward. And I'll tell you right now, based on what I can tell from the flux powder melting, the problem is this cap right here. This is the only cap that changed color. You can tell that this cap is darker than the rest. We still have flux powder on the rest of the components. Of course, heat is going to transfer over to the other components, but I released my probe on time before all of them sweat. And this one is the darkest one, which means this is the component that's sweating the most. Flux burned off that component first. Let's go ahead and remove the component and hopefully that's our bad guy, the culprit. And how are we gonna remove that component? Are we gonna use hot air? No. Are we gonna use a soldering iron? No. Are we gonna use a spudger? What do you mean a spudger? How are you gonna fit a spudger here? How are we gonna remove it? Easy. Just put the tip of your tweezer right here. And flick off, done. What in the world did you just do? Let me worry about that part. Let's go ahead and test. Do we still have a short? Do we still have a short? Before we read a short right here. And look at this. <laughs> 0 0.16 voltage drop. We do not have a zero reading anymore. And now if we measure the caps here, that's ground and that's not ground. 0 0.16 voltage drop, you see? Look at this. Look at this. We pinpointed the bad guy, the faulty cap. We flicked it off, and we're going to keep it that way. We do not have to replace that cap. We have a lot of caps around that chip. All those caps, they work in parallel. I gave that example so many times. If you have 100 police officers guarding a building, and one of them called in sick, it doesn't matter. 99 are still guarding that building. 
So why did the factory put that cap in if it's not needed? It could be code. It could be code or it could be something else. Like if you open a restaurant in California, they force you to have a sink to wash your hands. They force you to have a sink for mopping the floor. You clean the mop with that specific sink. And then you have a sink for the bathroom. And then you have a sink for washing dishes. You need like four or five sinks inside that restaurant. You only need one, but you are forced to have four or five sinks. The other thing is replacing that cap is a bit risky. The area is tight. Maybe we go in to replace that cap and solder a new one. We end up knocking off other capacitors on the board because the area is tight. Or maybe we knock off the chip. Why take that risk? The tablet will work 110% without that cap. And I'm going to hand the tablet over to Big Bus to reassemble and test. And I'll be back to finish the video. All right, so we put the screen back on the tablet. We did not fully reassemble the tablet. We have a separator between the screen and the housing. And I told Big Boss not to turn it on. I want to do it on video. Okay, so one, two. Yes, yes, amazing. I did not have any doubts, not for one second, that the tablet was not going to power on. We had a short circuit. We got rid of the short, and the tablet is working. Thanks to this amazing tool here that was able to narrow down which cap was the problem. <coughs> is there UPS? Okay. Whatever tools we use on our bench here, Flux, the Atomizer, this amazing microscope, we have the red, the latest and greatest version, articulating arm, thermal cameras, whatever you need, just log in to northwishfix.com. All items are in stock, unless, of course, the item is not in stock at the car checkout pay, and we almost always ship out same day. I hope you enjoyed the video. Let me know what you think of it down in the comments. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and we'll do something else in the next video.